Like, <laughs> started. Water. Started. It's all good. Okay. Um, good afternoon and welcome to the uh, March meeting of the Finance Committee. Um, first up, behind tab two, are the meeting minutes from the February uh, meeting. Can I get a motion to uh, approve those meeting minutes? So moved. Thank you. Second. Trustee Jones. Favor. Aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none. The minutes are adopted. Um, <coughs> first up, we're going to actually um, recommend approval of the finance committee charter. Um, there was an amendment. It's in paragraph. Uh, help me, Portia. One B one or I I B one. Where the conduit indebtedness has a special obligation. Bonds are being added to that definition. Um, with that change, can I please get a motion to recommend approval of the uh, charter to the uh, certainly? Sorry, so move. It's over here, Al, where they made the one change over here. Well, the red line is there, right there. Got it. Got it. Thank you. Thank you. Um, uh, uh, second. second, thank you very much. All in favor, aye. Aye. Any opposed? Hearing none. It will be recommended at tomorrow's uh, board meeting that the, that the charter uh, be uh, adopted. We actually have a very busy agenda today, thankfully. Good news. Um, we have seven, I believe. First up is the Columbia University, and David's going to present Columbia. That's behind tab uh, three. three. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, good afternoon. The uh, Finance Committee is being asked to recommend to the full board two series of tax exempt and or taxable fixed and or variable rate bonds with terms not to exceed 31 years and an amount not to exceed $430 million on behalf of Columbia University. Uh, bond proceeds will be used to finance a numerous uh, projects located throughout the Columbia University system. <coughs> which is expected to include various construction, renovation, and site preparation projects related to the university's expansion into the Manhattanville campus, as well as the renovation projects at Morningside and Medical Center campuses. Uh, those projects are, are provided uh, with additional detail in attachment one of the staff report. And I'll note that the, uh, the Manhattanville projects, which are well underway, were also uh, financed through the DASNY 2012 and 2015 bonds. The, uh, the financing will also include a refunding component, which uh, will be a refunding of the Series 2006A and the 2006B bonds. Assuming current market conditions, the total net present value savings in the range of $48.4 million, or 17.7 percent of the refunded bonds, is expected from the proposed refunding of the 2006A and 2006B bonds. Um, although we're asking for uh, maximum <clears throat> flexibility in the plan at this point is to issue only tax-exempt fixed-rate bonds. And uh, one other update to the, the credit summary, the lead manager for, for this transaction will be Goldman Sachs. Uh, that was unknown at the time of mailing, but the university has, has made that selection. Uh, as far as security, the university is currently rated triple E by or triple A, excuse me, by Moody's and S&P, with uh, both rating agencies assigning a stable outlook to the university. Accordingly, Columbia qualifies for an unsecured borrowing under DASNY's financing guidelines, and as such, the loan agreement will be a general unsecured obligation of the university, with no security interest in any revenues or assets of the university granted uh, granted by the university to DASNY under the loan agreement. Uh, just, just briefly on the, the credit, um, we, we did bring a, a transaction to the board last year and, and most of the, uh, the, the positive trends that we reported to the board last year have uh, continued to uh, improve. Um, the university continues to experience positive demand and enrollment trends. Um, of the 36,000 applicants for fall of 2015, <laughs> just over 2,000 were accepted or an acceptance rate of only 6.1%. Operating margins have averaged 235 million annually, or right around 6.2 percent. And Columbia continues to report significant net assets, which exceeded 13 billion at fiscal year end 2015. Um, Mr. Chair, that's all I had. 
Thank you very much, Dave. Any questions? I didn't have any, Mr. Chair. No, yes, no questions. I just had one, Dave. The, I know the project itself it might have been some uh, controversy over the years about the project. I know, I think the Court of Appeals, I think, probably um, ended the legal challenge to it. Is there anything we should be aware of from a community perspective? Regarding the project, I haven't seen anything. I'm not suggesting there is. I just, just do follow. Not at this point. There's no no community opposition that we're aware of. At this point. I think there there's been a very aggressive effort on the part of the university as well as um, members in the community to put in place a community benefits organization. So that's very powerful in terms of you know negotiating and looking for attributes for uh, the immediate community. Thank you. Um, any more of the questions? Can I get a motion to recommend approval of this uh, money funding at tomorrow's uh, board meeting? I recommend Thank approval. You. Second. Second. Thank you, Al. Um, all in favor, aye. Aye. Any opposed? <clears throat> None. Thank you very much. I'm going to stick with David. Behind four, we're going to Cornell. Thank you. The uh, Finance Committee is being asked to recommend to the full board one series of tax-exempt and or taxable fixed and or variable rate bonds in an amount not to exceed $165 million on behalf of Cornell University. Bond proceeds will be used to refund all or a portion of DASNY Series 2006A bonds. Assuming current market conditions, the total net present value savings in the range of $34.3 million, or just over 22% of the refunded bonds, is expected from the proposed refunding. <laughs> um, again, the, uh, the university uh, plans to issue only tax-exempt fixed-rate bonds for this refunding. The, uh, the Series 2006A bonds reach final maturity on July 1, 2035. And the final maturity of the refunding bonds, bonds will not exceed that, that final maturity of the bonds to be refunded. University is rated AA1 by Moody's and AA by S&P, with both rating agencies assigning a stable outlook to the university. And accordingly, Cornell qualifies for an unsecured borrowing under DASNY's current financing guidelines for independent institutions. And as such, the loan agreement will be a general obligation of the university with no security interest in any revenues or assets of the university. As far as the, uh, the credit for, uh, for Cornell, um, demand for the university's undergraduate programs remains very strong, with applications increasing by over 15% since the fall of 2011. And over that time, Cornell has become increasingly selective, accepting only 15.1% of applications for fall of 2015. The university's revenue composition is extremely diverse. For fiscal year 2015, only 17% of the university's operating revenues came from net tuition and fees. Um, the university's uh, fundraising has also been very strong. Uh, Cornell's uh, Cornell Now campaign raised over $6 billion through its conclusion in December of 2015, which set new records for both dollars raised and participation. And the impact of those fundraising efforts and the investment returns uh, over time are reflected in the university's balance sheet. As of fiscal year end 2015, the university reported $7.1 billion of cash and investments and total net assets of $9.5 billion. Mr. Chair. Thank you, Dan. Any questions? Uh, just one, and I, I don't think it's a <coughs> real issue at all, not even a concern. Um, under risk challenges, David, operating margins. Uh, the university is operated on a, uh, at a deficit on a, on a, an accrual basis, but as a surplus on a cash basis for each. And my question is regard to the cash basis. Yep. Is that for each of the last five years? That's correct. Yeah. I think in the report we only talk about 2015 out of cash. Yeah. Basis, but yeah. that's but that's been the case for the previous okay. five years. Thank you. Thank you. Anything else? Hearing no other questions, can I please get a motion to recommend approval of this refunding to the full board at tomorrow's board meeting? So moved. Thank you, Charles. Second. Second. Thank you very much. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? None. Motion carries. Thank you very much. <clears throat> David remains in his seat. And we move on to tab five, which is Fordham University. Thank you, David. <laughs> 
Thank you. The uh, the Finance Committee is being asked to recommend to the full board three series of tax exempt and or taxable fixed and or variable rate bonds with terms not to exceed 31 years and an amount not to exceed 175 million on behalf of Fordham University. Uh, bond proceeds will be used to finance renovation projects on the university's Lincoln Center campus. Uh, more specifically, the, the project consists of the reconstruction and renovation of an existing four-story building located at 140 West 62nd Street uh, on the Lincoln Center campus, which will include a new student center, an expanded and upgraded library, uh, classroom, <coughs> office, and assembly space. The, uh, the financing will also include a refunding component. Um, the refunding will include uh, the Series 2008 B bonds, as well as the Series 2011 B bonds. Uh, for the 2008 B bonds, assuming current market conditions, a uh, net present value savings in the range of $11 million, or 11% of the refunded bonds is expected. And for the 2011 B bonds, uh, those were issued in a term rate mode, and those bonds are subject to mandatory tender on July 1st, 2016. The university plans to issue only tax exempt uh, fixed rate bonds for this transaction, but they have uh, also let us know that they would likely incorporate some step coupon bonds, which we've seen in a couple other tran recent transactions. Um, Fordham is currently rated A2 by Moody's and A by S&P, both with stable outlooks. Under the recently revised financing guidelines, Fordham qualifies for an unsecured borrowing with a rating of A3, A minus, or better. Um, and so again, the loan agreement will be a general unsecured obligation of the university with no security interest. Uh, I just want to point out that uh, prior to the, the guideline changes, um, at a rating of A2, the university would have been subject to uh, a revenue pledge and a mortgage as well as financial covenants. And then uh, on, the, on the credit for Fordham, um, demand for the university's programs has been strong with applications up by over 34% over the last five years. FTE enrollment reached a five-year high of 13,871 for the fall of 2015. Fordham continues to report strong operating results with operating margins averaging 28.9 million over the last five years. <coughs> Uh, like m many other uh, higher education institutions in, in DASI portfolio, Fordham does rely heavily on tuition and fees um, for fiscal year 2015. Um, tuition and fees accounted for approximately 66% of the university's total revenue. And lastly, uh, Fordham's debt service coverage levels for the last five years have been very strong, averaging 3.2 to 1 since 2011. And the proposed issuance is expected to have little or no impact on that debt service coverage with a new money debt service offset by the savings from the refunding. Mr. Chairman. Thank you very much, David. No questions. None here. No. I don't have any questions. I just have a comment. The, you know, the facility we help finance, the law school and the, uh, the new dormitory in Lincoln Center, has really been a nice addition to that whole area. I think it once again proves and demonstrates how important our financing to these institutions on anyway. It's a massive um, change. Yes, <coughs> definitely. It's a change that really is. Anyway, um, hearing no other questions, can I get a motion to recommend approval of the uh, new money refunding of the bond? So Thank moved. you, Charlie. Second. Second, all in favor, aye. Aye. Opposed, none. Motion carries. And David, let me do the next one. <laughs> what trips over to Matt? Matt has uh, Sloan Kettering. That's behind tab six. <coughs> Yes, good afternoon. The Finance Committee has been asked to recommend to the full board a 25-year term for a bond issue in amount not to exceed $130 million on behalf of Memorial Sloan Kettering Cancer Center, which is located in Manhattan. The project that you're considering uh, includes the expansion of an extension clinic in Comac, New York, the construction of a new laboratory medicine building at 327 East 64th Street in Manhattan, as well as major medical equipment purchases and some hospital renovations. The security features will include a general obligation of the Center Corporation, as well as guarantees from Sloan Kettering Institute for Cancer Research and SKI Realty, Inc. As this is a private placement, the bonds will not be rated. Regarding Memorial Sloan Kettering, this is a multi-billion dollar corporation with nearly nine and a half billion dollars in total assets, just over 4.1 billion in total liabilities, and nearly 5.4 billion in total net assets. 
through September 30th of 2015, an operating gain of 143 million was recorded on approximately 2.7 billion of total operating revenues. Looking at liquidity, the institution recorded $620 million in cash and short-term investments as part of its $1.54 billion in current assets. Total contributions and pledges raised through fundraising efforts were just over $750 million for the past two years combined. Regarding utilization, outpatient visits have increased recently, which is indicative of the shift in the delivery of cancer care to the outpatient setting. The expansion of the hospital's regional network of outpatient sites has been a major contributor to the growth of outpatient visits. And finally, this is a AA rated institution and it's world renowned and it is the premier institution for setting the standard of cancer care. Countless discoveries and clinical research have occurred here that have led to innovations in all areas of cancer diagnosis and treatment. Mr. Chairman. Thank you very much, Matt. Comments, questions? I, I did contact Matt during the um, last week um, <clears throat> because um, MSK has got some significant hospital outpatient clinic operations and uh, uh, the federal government is, uh, has rolled out a plan to um, modify reimbursement for any outpatient uh, centers that are off the campus. Mm -hmm. Uh, and it's supposed to take a sig pretty significant uh, financial uh, hit. Uh, most, most of the hospitals are going to take a pretty significant financial hit. Don't know what the amount of, it, of that hit would be for MSK. Uh, Matt didn't know at the time, but it would be asked, pursued with, the, with MSK uh, during, uh, after um, processing uh, in this first phase before adoption of documents. Chad, thank you for that comment. I, I didn't know that. It seems to me to be counterintuitive. I, I, I'm asking you now. You, you may not know. But it's counterintuitive to reduce reimbursements for outpatient care when you can serve more patients and, and provide more care. From the federal government's perspective, they want to equalize payments, uh, regardless of who's providing yeah. those payments for, yeah. a, for a given service. Yeah. Uh, so they're, they're thinking, why should I pay a hospital more to provide the service when I'm providing far less to other providers to provide the same I see. service? I see. So uh, that, that's, that's really the issue. Yeah, no kidding. But aren't these cancer treatment outpatient centers? Like, well, they do one in Harrison, right? Or somewhere? Yep. Yeah. They've got one in, they one in Harrison. They also have out of state as well right. in New Jersey. Um, in fact, I think they have one in Florida too, if I'm not really? mistaken. Um, the and the, so I, I I really don't know what the implications Population will be for MSK. And by the way, it's not final. Um, yeah, yeah. Although that's that's clearly the the direction the Fed has indicated. Well, there's such an extraordinary fundraising machine. That, uh, Can't argue with that. Just it's not likely to impact them as much as it might other institutions. Would agree. Wow. Charlie, the, 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 the 49 million for the medical equipment, does help like review the purchases or? Uh, it, it, it depends. If it's not uh, programmatically related, you know, if it's part of a, of a, uh, of a capital project or a, 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 a new service to be certified, uh, it, it does not uh, come through a prior review and approval process. So, you know, as you'll see, as you'll see with the TELPs, actually none of those TELP applications, none of the, uh, the equipment elements in the TELP applications have received prior review and approval by the department. They don't have to. It was part of a uh, certificate of need, need streamlining initiative back in 2012, and, uh, uh, and these facilities can move forward with those purchases without getting department health approval. And I guess it's subject to their own board, right? Their own. Their so board. Veterans board, board reviews the. Yeah. So thank you, Charlie. And I guess we'll <coughs> we'll proceed today. And then if there's any other uh, questions, yeah. I, I don't have an objection right. to go into resolution to proceed. Okay. Thank you. With that understanding, can I get a motion to recommend approval? I I, I, I can move. A okay. second. Okay. Um, all in favor, aye. Aye. Any opposed? None. Motion carries. Thank you. Now we're going to go into TELP world, right, Portia? 
First up is the uh, Hebrew home for the gays of Brookdale. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Behind tab seven <clears throat> is the uh, help financing for the Hebrew home for the gays of Riverdale in the amount of $13,948,875,000. This actually is an amendment. Uh, this is an amended resolution. We brought this to the board previously back in the fall and October in the amount of $11 million. Um, there were some changes to the equipment um, to the equipment list, basically, there were certain things um, that changed, including some lower project costs, some longer financing terms, which basically also enabled uh, the Hebrew Home for the Aged to undertake some additional um, energy conservation measures. Uh, so we, we did need to bring this back before the board, so it's here for your consideration. Thank you. Thank you, Portia, very much. Um, any questions? None. Now, other than that, we reviewed the elements of the uh, of the proposed help financing, and they they don't require department approval. And the, and the 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 equipment is, is falls under the the authority to, for the help, right? Because it's yes. much like electric generators. Yep. And yeah, these are basically various kinds of energy Thanks. conservation measures. Yep. Okay, thank you. Um, can I get a motion to recommend approval of tomorrow's board meeting? Thank so, you. So moved. Second. Um, all in favor, aye. Aye. Any opposed, none. That motion carries. Um, next up, behind tab eight, is a 20 million TELP for the hospital for special surgery. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Behind tab eight, it is TELP financing $20 million for the New York Society for the Relief of the Ruptured and Crippled, maintaining the hospital for special surgery. Um, as you know, it it's a policy of uh, the Public Authorities Control Board that TELP leases, which exceed $10 million, um, be uh, presented both to the Authority Board and KCB for approval. Um, so this financing, uh, you can see in the attached equipment list, uh, basically includes various OR nursing and IT equipment. Mr. Chairman. Thank you. So, and, and does the uh, health we did. We were, the Department of Health uh, reviewed each of the elements and found that it did not require prior review and approval. Thank you, John. Any other questions? No, sir. Hearing none, can I please get a motion to recommend approval? So, the board meeting. Thank you, Charlie. Second. Second. All in favor, aye. Aye. Any opposed? None. Motion carries. Last up, Rochester 20 million health measure <coughs> behind tab nine. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. <clears throat> uh, again, behind tab nine is a tell. Uh, transaction for Rochester General Hospital in the amount of $20 million. Uh, it, it's previously discussed. It's the uh, policy of Public Authority Control Board uh, that help leases which exceed $10 million be brought before this board as well as PACB for your, for your approval. Um, the attached equipment list uh, basically identifies various IT hospital um, and laboratory equipment. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Once again, the department reviewed these uh, pieces of equipment and uh, determined that there was no need for prior review and approval. Thank you. Can I get a motion to recommend approval? Motion. Motion. Thank you, Charlie. Second. Second. Thank you, Al. Uh, all in favor, aye. 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 Any opposed? None. Motion carries. Any other questions, concerns, issues? <coughs> Hearing none, can I get a motion to adjourn? Thank you. Second. Second. Thank you. All in favor, aye. None opposed. Thank you very much. We need to that one that huh? thing on. <laughs> Thank you, Charlie. No problem. It's here in the other room. Thank you. Probably confused me about the Columbia and about Cornell.